the mics in. Oh my god, yeah. Hey Ron, you'll be able to hear us in just... Well, they wouldn't be able to hear you. <laughs> they wouldn't be able to hear you say that. Yeah, but they wouldn't be able to hear you say that, so... Okay, everyone. Hopefully that's not too scratchy. And there we go. We got mics on. We got a mic here. Hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Hello, hello. Let's bring up the feed ski. Feed ski, feed ski. Let's feed. Ein Moment bitte. There we are. We should get flat screen TV, put it in the background, and then like have Hmm? Flat screen TV and have this up there. Yeah. Okay, ready? Almost. Three. Huh? Yep, go. Okay, how's your positioning there? Good? Got your notes? Okay, three, two. Welcome everyone to KCP Kids episode nine. I am your host, Will. My son Derek sits to my left. How are we doing tonight, Derek? Yeah, awesome. You're doing awesome? Very good. How'd you like that new intro to the show? Uh, yeah, it's different, but it yeah. It was different. I uh, I just thought of that about approximately three and a half seconds before I hit live. Oh, so wow. So I hit go. I was right up the top of my head. Nice. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, I know, I do. We got a big show for everyone at, yeah, right. Thank you. I appreciate that. (laughs) Uh, We got a big show tonight, as we usually do. Uh, We told you last week that, actually, hold on, I'm going to make a a quick post here that we are, uh, we are recording for all of our Facebook fans out there. And, uh, but yeah, no, we've, uh, we got a big show on this stormy evening. Yes, isn't very. It? It's very rainy. It's and crazy out there, isn't it? The, there's windows right up there, and you can hear the wind. I know you guys can't hear it because you know the mics are not like that where you can't hear outside. But well, you can't make them. But uh, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, very. I could go take a boom mic out there and uh-huh. let everyone listen, right? <laughs> yeah, That'd but be a long the walk. wind's actually pushing against the window. You can hear it hit the window. And there's a funny story that last night I was. Yeah, I right. Was yeah, lay this out for everyone. I'm yeah. sure they'll enjoy that. Last night. Um, I was sleeping in bed, or I was just laying in bed. Then all of a sudden, a big wind gush just slammed my window, and I jumped. I was like, I, I freaked out. I thought I was like flipping, like someone was breaking the house, like slamming the window or something. It freaked the crap out of me. I was whoa, 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 watch the language there, I was like, crap. youngster. <laughs> no, but it, it scared me. I was like, whoa, because it just banged right against the window, and it's, it's been windy the past how long? It, it seems like it's been windy for like the past yeah, three or four like months. Yeah, like winter. Like it's like they're replacing wind for snow. No. Which Evidently. is not exactly what you are no. hoping for, right? No, but this Saturday we have to go snowshoeing. So That's true. We're excited. We're going to go up in the mountains and uh, do a little snowshoeing with yep. the snow shovels. No, no snow shovels, yeah. just snowshoes. I hope right? not. Yeah, the weather has been pretty interesting. Although I yeah. hear tonight, as I was, uh, I was getting ready for the show here, mm-hmm. I was reading a weather blog that said yeah. that... Um, there's going to be snow up in North Bonneville, which is only like 25, 30 miles yeah. to our east. So no, Not too far away. No, that'd be pretty neat if it down. scooted on down here, wouldn't it? Yeah, but... you kind of like that, wouldn't you? Yeah, that would be pretty sweet, but we've had so much wind, and I'm hoping that wind might blow it over here, but, you know, Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen. It's very You rainy. can hope, yeah. right? Yeah, it's very rainy. It's like big raindrops with like really hard wind. Well, Mom and I had dance tonight, and on our way home from our dance lessons, you know, it turned dark, and it had been very nice up until this afternoon. And yeah. so I'm driving along, and my truck is not the smallest truck around. No. Holy moly, it things like a, a sail in the wind. I'm cruising down Highway 14, and it's blowing me all over yeah. the place, and I couldn't believe it. So that was a... That made for an interesting ride home, at least. So yeah. We have uh, we have some exciting news coming up um, mm-hmm. here in about four hours and eight minutes. The young gentleman sitting to my left is going to join a new club. What club is that, Derek? Oh, yeah. Teenager club. He's going to be a teenager. So everyone that is club, listening. Hey. Or, oh, it's a club. All right. Only a few get in and only a few leave, right? Pretty much everyone that turns 13 uh-huh. and then then 20, right? Oh, I guess, yeah. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, Derek, uh, Derek's big 13th birthday is tomorrow. So, you are, yep. uh, let's kind of give him a rundown. Because in our house, 
uh, birthdays are a pretty special day for the individual yeah. who is celebrating, right? What 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 gets to happen? Laid out for everyone. So like tonight, we went and got lunch for me tomorrow, Subway, because I usually get lunch uh, for my school day. Because I mean, I usually have my birthdays on the weekdays, except for you know, well, actually, yeah, next well, year I'll probably have every every seven or six or seven years you have it on the weekend. But by and yeah. large, most of the time your birthday is going to be during the week, and yeah. it's going to be while you're in school. Yep. So I usually get lunch, but before I go to um, school in the morning. I usually either have Fruity Pebbles or... A big um, treat in our house. Yeah. And, but then usually when I wake up, there's like like a little bit of decorations with like happy birthday and stuff. And then I get like a little treat in the morning, like some donut holes or like Fruity Pebbles. And then I go to school, have my lunch. And then when I get back after basketball practice and stuff, um, we, I usually, you know, get ready and then after they're done with their habanero stuff yeah we'll go over that in yeah a little bit. Um, after they're done with that we'll go to red robin you know have all that have our cool fun food i guess and uh give, have presents and then we'll go to baskin robbins come home play some games which yeah that's one not, thing that is big it's not because against because yeah because it's not against like we said in our last podcast like yeah. how i don't have you know i don't put because i don't I don't play video games during the weekdays unless it's a really special occasion. Which is your which, birthday. Yeah, which is my birthday. Which in that it, case, you get a little slide on it. But like we said in the last podcast, I still stick to that rule where I don't usually have it unless it's a special occasion. I think the biggest thing out of all that, I know it's fun to get the gifts and all that, but yeah. you pretty much don't get told no tomorrow. Yeah. To a reasonable level. Well, yeah, level. it's like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's no, we're not going to like, go out and do anything crazy or no. anything like that, but. It's kind of like, it's, we treat it like you're the, I don't want to say master, but. No, kind you're of, it's, certainly not the master, but, but we do like, give you a little bit of yeah, leeway like, on things. You don't have as many chores, and or you, sometimes I don't even yeah, have any chores. You pretty much don't have any chores. Yeah, I don't have any chores. On your birthday. And um, so it's just, it's nice. And also, I get to stay up a little bit later than 8 45. Right. No, you, you just try to implement that rule. We'll, no. we'll see about that. Yeah. And, but that, then, that's not, yeah, that's mom and I's decision yeah. on that one. Uh huh. But when I was younger, like I would like to, I, want, I always wanted to go like BLs or something, but I'm getting older, so I don't know. Yep, I might, you're getting I might on just in not, age now, I, aren't you? I just stay home and start streaming, you know. Yeah. Just stream. Because, you know, who cares about going out and jumping on trampolines? I mean, certainly oh, not me. Oh, you still enjoy I'm just that. <laughs> I'm be, I was fact, being sarcastic. Was it, no, was it last year that we did that? Yeah, we did. We did, we did last that. Year. What was that, Sky Zone? That's yeah, last I had no, got to. Yeah, we, yeah I think that was last year. For anyone out there that. Want something good to do with their kids or, you know, that's healthy, all that kind of stuff. I have got to highly recommend Sky Zone there on 4th Plain, uh, yeah. just west of Stapleton. That mm -hmm. place is a kick in the pants. Yeah, hopefully you don't get any foot diseases now. Well, you don't go But no, but you wear no, socks. You wear they give you socks. socks. They give you socks. Yeah, so you're out socks. there. But this place is... I mean, it's huge because it's an old Albertsons. Oh, yeah. And all it is is a bunch yeah. of little... I mean, I bet you they're six by four uh, trampolines, and then they've got some big ones, but it's huge. I, I really highly recommend yes. it. It's a There's great like place to go to blow off steam and stuff like that. If you got a bunch of kids that you need to wear out or something, yeah. take them down to Sky Zone. That's a really good place. They for also them, have it? like little, yeah, they are. And they have they, games, video oh yeah. games and stuff and like that. And they have catering, like you can um, order in for a party or something. Well, yeah, but it's about on the lines with yeah. Chuck E. Cheese. I mean, you got cardboard pizza and stuff like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, but like uh, you, there's like foam pits. There's like um, dodgeball, like special dodgeball. Yeah, also yeah have, that was fun. There's a lot. Of, yeah, there's a lot of fun. Like there's um, wall trampolines where you can like jump yep. and bounce yeah, up there. So much fun. Yeah. He broke his um, back almost. I didn't break my uh -huh, back. Almost. I, I didn't feel good. But well, uh -huh. anyway, as we move along here, if anyone doesn't want to hear about your big uh, birthday all day long, but no, it's no. pretty exciting to turn turn or to be become a teenager. It's a yeah. It's a rite of passage and uh, lots of fun things coming up for you until you turn mm -hmm. 20 years old. And, and one of those is becoming an adult. So you're beginning yep. that path, which please everyone out there say a prayer for mom and I. 
because having another teenager in the house is always going to be a lot of fun. Yep. And as Derek alluded to momentarily, uh, one thing that we're going to do on the big show tomorrow, KCP Kinetic Chaos Podcast, is I made a little bet with Wes on the Indianapolis Colts and Kansas City Chiefs football game last week. And that bet was that the Indianapolis Colts, that my, my choice, sorry, I bumped the mic there, my choice was that Indianapolis was going to win the game. Well, for anyone that uh, watched the game or has seen the score lately, they did not win the game. So yep. that means that I am going to be sitting in this chair right here tomorrow evening, starting at 5 o'clock. And I'm going to eat two habanero peppers live at some point in time on the show. Now, yep. that being said, we are we are going out to dinner for your birthday after that. But I may have to have a margarita or something in the meantime before that. that. So not, mom can just drive us or brother can drive us because... I don't know if that would go well with the habanero. It doesn't matter. I just need something to take the old uh, burn away because <laughs> it's that or a milkshake or something like that. I don't so, know if... Uh, I, don't, okay. I mean, I'm definitely not... All to you, but... Yeah, I'm certainly not looking forward to it. That is for darn sure. But let's, uh, let's actually get into the show since we're about a third of the way through our time <laughs> yeah. already. Well, first up in our first segment, the Fortnite segment, of course... Looks like we've got a new scoped revolver and a new glider redeploy. Glider item? redeploy item. Late honesty. Okay, so the new scope revolver. Like I said, I have not tried it yet. But um, now, when did this come out? This came out in this. It came out this week. Okay, so about like two Monday days or ago. Tuesday? About two days ago. So Monday. And yeah, in the morning. And basically, what it is, it's a revolver. And if, if you didn't know the Revolver actually got vaulted, and vaulted means got out of the game. Taken out of the game? Taken out of the game, yes. And so it got vaulted, and so they brought, but they actually brought back a scoped revolver. So basically, it's a regular revolver with a scope on it. It's, it. It says itself, pretty much. And I mean, I think it does 44 to the head. I mean, not 44. 44 to the body, and then like 84 or something to the head, which is pretty powerful. It's about almost a scar. No, a scar might be a little bit less, but it's around there. It's around that damage, and um, I've been watching High Distortion, and he got like four kills with it and tilted. High, well, High Distortion is a streamer. Correct? Yeah, he's a streamer, and um, he got he he was like doing a, he was like aimbotting with it. It was like insane. You got so many headshots on people and stuff. It was awesome. But uh, I've been watching, like, some videos and some, uh, like, videos of people liking it and some people, videos of people not liking it. So I'm pretty sure well, it's, like... why wouldn't they like it? Because they're bad at aiming. I mean, honestly, oh, they it's they like, don't like the gun. It's yeah, not that they don't like him. No, no, no. They don't like, yeah, they don't like the gun. Okay. So some people like don't like the gun and some people don't like the gun. It's It's, like... Okay, so like it's kind of like people like guns because they're either good at aiming with it or not good at aiming with it. Like some people don't like the snipers because they're not good at aiming with it. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's, well, it's that's very a lot hard of to aim with, yeah. with it, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it, I, I I hearken back to the old school Goldeneye days when I played games, and yeah. you'd have the scope and you'd pull in. It would get really tight on the person, but. Yeah. It was incredibly hard to keep it on them, especially yeah. if they were moving. And it comes in purple and gold. So there's a gold one and a purple one. And so, it's, I don't know, I haven't tried it yet, but I'll try it tomorrow. But I'm pretty sure it will be, like, in my opinion, I think it will be like a revolver. Which is like, I don't really, I didn't really like the revolver unless you hit someone for 100 to the head. But that was in the, the good old days when Fortnite was, no one knew it. And The it was, good old days, you were speaking last year? Yeah. Or 2017. Yeah, around there, yeah. Okay. And like season three or season two. But when, and then the revolver, and a lot of people did like the revolver. That's just because they're good at it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, in my opinion, aiming on the PS4 is a really, is a lot easier for me because you actually get aimbot, or not aimbot, aim assist on controller, which means that if you miss a target, it kind of moves your, it follows the guy. Mm -hmm. So it, or follow the guy or girl. Um, and so it's kind of like aim assist but on PC it's a little bit you have a mouse and so it's a little bit harder to aim and all that 
I thought the mouse made things easier for you. Though. Wait, it makes it. I mean, in my opinion, it makes it easier to build and stuff because I'm just now I'm just like such a good builder, right? And uh, no, I'm just kidding. But I'm a wow. better. I'm a better. Hold on, don't hurt your shoulder. Tapping your patting yourself on the back there, dude. Uh-huh. And, but I mean, I, I don't know. I think it's just it's just a matter of aiming and what you're good at. And now we're gonna get into the glider redeploy item, and okay. don't get it mixed up with. And you know, if you think I'm saying glider redeploys back, no, it's not. It's a glider. Oh, so the glider redeploy was actually something that you could do, or yes. something like so that. Yes. So basically, what the glider redeploy was is that you could jump off a giant mountain or jump off a giant building, and you could just redeploy your glider. You oh, wouldn't okay. have to take a launch pad, or wouldn't have to take jump out of an airplane, or anything like that. You could just jump off something, and it will automatically redeploy. And a lot of people loved it, and just made the game a lot faster because oh, okay. people could land on en- 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 enemies really fast. Okay. And so a lot of people liked it, and then they took it out of the game. So now they added back, I think it was the same day as they added scoped pistol, I'm pretty, the scoped revolver. Okay. It was, I think it was the same day and the same patch notes. Um, but they added that back, or not added. So it's like, it's kind of different than the actual glider redeploy. Okay. Because you actually have to keep it in your inventory, so it takes away one of your slots. That's the only bad thing is it takes one of your slots away, so you could be holding minis or heels in it. But not. But if you really want that glider redeploy, you have to keep it in the back of your or put it in your um, inventory slot. That's the only thing I think it might be a little bit tough with, because I mean, you obviously you don't have to go right to the weapon and click it. You can keep it in your inventory and jump off things, and it'll just keep ticking down, ticking down, like keep coming down every time you use it. And so then it'll you know eventually run out. But I mean, I think I think it's pretty neat. Like that they add it back, but it's just kind of it kind now, of sucks that they add it into you, item. You were, you mentioned that this the vault situation here. So when you say that something was vaulted, do they take an item? Let's say the scoped pistol that we're talking about here. So in three months down the road, will they take that and put it in the vault for say six months and then bring it back out? So okay, there's different. So they could be so. The drum gun was actually, which was a really good weapon, which is kind of like an SMG, but it's a drum gun. It's like like an old gun, mm-hmm. which is um. But they actually deleted it from the game, which means it doesn't come back. Okay, but in the vault, but it vaulted will means come. it just uh, not always. It back. could. It always has a chance to come back, which they could also they could bring back the um drum gun, which I doubt it because it says they actually deleted it from the game, which means that. But vaulting, vault, uh, vaulting means you just takes it out, and then they could possibly put it back in, because like so they vaulted. Um, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but two months ago. I, I can't correct you because I don't viewers, know if you're but, wrong. Uh, <laughs> but it was about um a couple months ago or something like that. They vaulted the dual pistols and they brought back the dual pistols. I think uh, last week, last weekend, they brought back brought back the dual pistols how often do they change this stuff i mean how how often are they adding guns taking they, them away so they took a well, like, things like i that. was watching ninjas like stream and he was getting very raged over how many glitches were in the game because um epic took a break on a christmas break and so a bunch of glitches got in the game and a bunch of like just bad things aren't supposed to be in the game because they took a break because you know, okay. it was christmas break yeah and so uh, I think they they I think they update everything once a week is what I would think you know they do probably every day honestly because there's epic workers obviously yeah well you mentioned something there real quick that I want to remind everyone and that's that we have a stream or you have a stream you can follow Derek um, on twitch.com backslash uh, D underscore slay am no, I right KCP no. underscore D slay KCP underscore D slay yeah yes. I'm, I run the thing and I don't know it. And then Derek's uh, screen name on uh, Fortnite itself is KCP Gaming. KCP underscore gaming. It is. It's the underscore on the game too. Yeah. Well, I, sure? I put it like that. Oh, okay. But I'm gonna I'm gonna be changing it to KCP underscore D Slay, and I might put T- Twitch TV or TTV on it. So that means that we're people, not gonna. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about it later. Anyway, um, but yeah. So remind everyone about that and want to remind you to go to the website if you have an interest in what what are you laughing about i put the water up my nose oh wonderful that's why that's good tv folks 12 almost 13 year olds snorting water up their nose on camera 
Anyway, um, if you have an interest, if you are a friend of the show, a friend of us, anything like that, and you have an interest in joining the KCP stream team, we're looking to build that team. You can go to our Instagram feed, which is KCP stream team. Same thing, Twitter. Uh, hit me up there, or you can email me at Will, or you can email Derek, Derek at Kinetic. Yeah. Um, Kine- uh, yeah, kineticchaos.com. Yeah. So it's just Will or Derek, D E R E K at kineticchaos.com. If you have any interest, hit us up and we'll see what we can uh, we can do to get you on the team. Because our whole goal is to jump on Twitch at once we hit our achievements and put a Twitch stream team together. But we have to accomplish yeah. this uh, streaming yeah. numbers and things like that. Yeah, and. Uh, if you guys have been, if you've uh, emailed me or at all or anything, I haven't put my email on my phone yet. Yes, you have. It's on there. All and you have to do is? is check it. Yes. Okay, I well, I have there. not checked that yet. So if you guys probably want to do that, so maybe hit me up. You can hit us up on Twitter. It's just uh, at Kinetic Chaos Pod. Anywhere on the internet, facebook.com backslash Kinetic Chaos Productions, all of the above. By now, if you're listening to this or watching this, you probably know how to hit us up. Even a smoke signal may work. So, well, now it's time for the always fun animal time, animal yep. animal segment. And today you've got a, a pretty well. I think you pretty much you bring pretty interesting animals to to the segment. I each try week to do yes. I don't try to do show, it. Yeah. But this one, I am pretty darn uh, pretty darn interested in. What what is it today, Derek? It is the poison dart frog. Poison dart frog. So uh-huh. laid on. Me. Where is frog. the poison dart frog from? So uh, the poison dart frog is central and South America in the tropical, and they're native to the tropical central and South Americas. Um, So they're basically they're tropical animals, but uh, here's a little bit of a paragraph about, um, so poison dart frogs is the common name of group of frogs in the family of the den, it's a long name, it's a dendro, dendro patidae, patidae, no, patidae. dendro bat, batidae, yeah. I'm going to put it in the notes, mm-hmm. which um, are, where did you get these notes, where did you, where did you go off, where off oh, the internet, do you so remember, you, so you type it, oh, I type well, I'll, we'll talk about it yeah. off here, I'll put a link to the notes on the show notes at kineticchaos.com, so mm-hmm. if you want to find out more after Derek gives his description and whatnot, or tells us about them, if they're yeah. interesting to you. So they're um, native to the tropical central in South America. These species are diurnal and often have brightly colored bodies. And if you guys didn't know this, if you if an animal does have really bright colored things, it's a, a colors on their like col- yeah skin colors on their, their skin or thing. Okay. It's a lot. It's a distressing not not a distress single, but um, if you ever seen a peacock when they put their feathers up really high, it's kind yeah. of a um. It's a warning. It's signal. a war- Yeah, it's a warning. Like stay away from me. And the more I. I mean, in my, like, if, like, when I've been, like, seeing animals and researching animals and stuff like that, the more I, when people, when I see, um, really bright colors, the more bright colors, uh, they're, like, really lethal. Okay. And, like, I mean, I know peacocks aren't that lethal, but, like, they, they do, well, these are. Well, snakes aren't very, le- aren't very colorful, and they can be really lethal. Some of them though. are. <laughs> well, that's true, but like the but, king cobra. Anyway, yeah. go on. So, and they, they often have brightly colored bodies. That this bright coloration is correlated with the toxicity of the spe- species. Toxici- toxicity. toxicity. Toxicity of the species, making them opsomatic. Opsomatic. And um, so that, that's what, like I was saying. Their their bright colors makes the toxicity 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 <laughs> whatever, and so the bright colors that's what makes it like and it's like if you touch it and or insert in your mouth or something, it's that's it's toxic. I don't think you want to put a frog in your mouth. No, but if you touch a frog, you, you pick up the oh, frog and then you okay. like wipe your nose or you know, pick your ears or. So Watch, do go we have any eyes. like are any countries that you can you can identify for us in Central or South America? Are we talking Honduras? Are we talking um, Costa Rica? Any more in the places? tropicals? Um, so like I don't know, like Bahama. Nicaragua, yeah, oh. around like Bahama, like in the like okay. around. So there are in because the um, Bahamas aren't in Central America; they're in no, the but, Gulf. Yeah, but, but um, they're in the. The really big river, not Nile River, the 
Amazon. Amazon River. They're in. There's. Uh, they're there. They're in more tropics. Um, and so like that, like we had in the alligators, there, there's a lot of animals, obviously, in the Amazon River. And, uh, the scientific name, like we already said, is the Dendrobatidae. And I always like to have the, you know, a little, um, paragraph, the actual name, like the scientific name, Mm -hmm. um, and the did you know, and then the length, or the width, or just like that kind of stuff. The size of them. Yeah. And so here you go. Uh, Did you know? In captivity, tadpoles have been raised on a variety of diets, ranging from algae to the eggs of other dart frogs. So the tadpoles of the poisonous dart frog is what you're talking about. So they're pretty much like they eat their own kind when they're tadpoles. When they're, um, because the tadpole turns into a frog, obviously. Mm -hmm. But they, from algae to the eggs of other dart frogs, but the minimum, with minimum. But with minimal success, so okay. it's like I'm, it's like I'm pretty sure it's like when is it if it's a ba- it's a bad frog or it's like a dead egg or something. They also eat those, but they eat like their their own kind, and it's like it's kind of like you have to make it out alive, <laughs> kind of to survive. Survival of the fittest type thing. Yeah. So their length is so length meaning. Well, I guess you, they can't. The people who are listening you, can't hear. Why don't you go ahead and tell us? Uh, their, yeah, their length is so two people listening two point two inches. Okay, so not so, very big at yeah, all. Yeah, that's the average length. Not all of them, like I said, in the alligator or crocodile, whichever crocodile. one we did, whichever one we did. Like I said, it's the average amount of most dart frogs. It's not the exact amount, so not all of them are going to be two point two inches. So don't go out there finding one and say, "Oh wait, no, that's not two point. That's two point three inches." No, that's that's the average amount. They could be bigger. They could be smaller. It's just that's the average adult amount. Okay. And so that's the. the I think they're pretty sweet. I mean, it's like I wouldn't. Obviously, you would not want to. No, own I don't one. think you want to have one. Those. This but is not something you're going to bring ta- home to mom and It's a type of thing. It's, yeah, it's a type of thing. Is that it would be cool to experience in the wild. And because I've watched mm-hmm. videos of people experiencing them in the wild. And How do you experience them though? You look at them, get the hell away, heck away from. Sorry, we'll bleep that out in post, but. No. I mean, I mean, really though, what are, they, what are you going to do? They're not going to jump on you. Cause it's dead. They're they're toxic. So yeah, when you touch them. That. You have to touch them. If you stay away from them, you stay a safe distance where you can take pictures and look at them. They're beautiful animals. They're bright, colorful, and all that. So now, do they jump on you and then lick you, or are they no. spitting on you? How are they? How are yeah. they passing their poison? Along? There, it's, it's just a, a defense mechanism. You touch them. Oh, it's just, it's just a to defend thing. themselves. It's just to defend themselves. Okay, so they're not spitting it no. on you. They're not biting it's like, you. It's kind of like their bright colors attract their prey. Yeah, their prey I mean. come to them. It kills the prey. Then they can eat their food. Okay, I got you. So it's like kind of like that. That's basically it's, that's like most animals, honestly, like. Most animals like to they, they shine their brightness, and other animals like to come to them, and then they kill them for food. And it's like it's just you know circle life kind of, with, yeah. especially with the frogs and stuff. Well, so, we'll uh, we'll take a look at that. I'll see if I can find a picture of one of these yeah, poisonous dart frogs to uh, include in the post. One thing that we did we did uh, uh, forget at the top of the show is, and it, as you might notice. Derek and I are both kind of nasally. We're both getting over a little bit about of the sickness the last few yeah. days. In fact, Dee had to stay home from school yesterday, and I've been mm-hmm. kind of laying low from work as I do not want to be uh, one that passes that along to folks. But mine has not. Okay, enough slurping. You're on the air, okay? My goodness, son. Anyway, that's why we're drinking water like mad and whatnot is because our throats and and, and whatnot. Anyway, so but next up here in the in the third segment of the show is something uh, that you want to cover called paramotoring or paragliding or paragliding. Because exactly I, cause I had never heard of it called paramotoring before this evening. It was not paragliding because. So, the motoring though is the ones where it actually has a little motor like yes. a propeller on the so back of it. Correct? It's like a, so basically it is as if you ever seen like out in um, the swamps and they have little little fan boats. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I wouldn't the, call them fan boats, but no, the fan boats those are like uh, those are uh, uh, the ones that go really fast. Yeah, what the heck are those? Called? I don't know no, what they're I called either. Remember. 
Jet boat. No, they're not jet no, they're boats. Not jet they're boats. Air, bo- air boats is what Something they call like that, yeah. Because yeah, they have big pro- pro- propellers uh-huh. on them. And back. so basically, with that, that's the exact same thing. It looks like the same thing with a little bit smaller on the back of your uh, your back, basically. And so here's a little thing. Here's a little... Um, is it a... Is it like an actual so paraglider a, that you hang on, or no. is it something that so, you sit in? So it's you're in a little, you're hooked up to the back of the motor, and the parachute is hooked up to you. A parachute? So, yeah, paras- that's why it's called para motoring. Well, no, it's there's a motor. paragliding and stuff. Yeah, like so basically, that, with the parachutes right behind you, it's hooked up to your harness and hooked up to your motor thingy. Then you turn on the motor, and there's something called a foot launch and a wheel launch. A wheel launch is there's wheels that launches you. Then okay. a foot launch is you start running and then the parachute will come right right with you as the um the um the uh motor or the fan you, you turn will push this you. thing on or something? I mean how big is yeah. this? No, Give it's me big. An idea. You start you start it up like But okay, so what is the mechanism that you're staying inside of this thing or holding it's, it's on? It's a to harness. It? It's a harness. You harness your harness to it and you're kind of sitting in a seat. And this propeller is on your back. Yeah, you're kind of sitting on a seat. I have never heard of this. And so the, this is new if to you're me, ever, folks. So you know when you're parachuting yeah, and you, you jump out of an airplane and you're gliding, then you put it up. It's the exact same thing. You know how it doesn't Except hurt. Except you get a big propeller on your back. Yeah, but you're sitting in a seat, pretty much. It's kind of like a little seat. Okay, I'm gonna have to pull up a. You, you got a YouTube video on this that I can include in the show? Yeah, you can go to. Um, I well, no, I'll name, just include it. Go to yeah. kineticast.com for the show notes. This and is episode nine. And I'll have that in the show notes because yeah. I want to see this as well. This is crazy. So talk. basically, what it is is, it's you're just strapped in to with the parachute above you, and then you run as, and then you start you start the motor by pulling as a pull start, mm-hmm. and it go, and it starts up, you know, and it has exhaust and everything, and then you um, run with it. That, that's what a foot launch is. You run, mm-hmm. and then the the motor will push you with the air and then the glide will come up then boom you start taking off and you have a little throttle in your hand with a little button and you can press that button or push it forward to have more throttle and then you know like slow it slow the throttle down then you have the little pulling thing to turn your parachute yeah, and just like up. parachute right yeah exactly and you can go up higher by pulling back and then that like, going down by pulling up and it's really cool like this guy was doing a backflip with it, <laughs> it wow, I gotta see this now it's is really this something cool. How, how do we get a hold of this stuff? Where do we go? Can we rent it somewhere? Can we buy it? I mean, I, well, I no, mean, it's I, a, this is just me asking. We don't have to get into it on the I air looked, right I here, looked at I looked at a, a price. It was like nine thousand to twenty-two thousand dollars. What? Twenty-two grand. And this guy like has like strapping four a phone. razor on your back. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's very expensive, and it's like you can get. Where do you go do this? It's uh, you have to have. Like at the beach or something? Or yeah, what? people do go to the beaches and do it, but obviously you have to stay away from people. I watched a video of someone paragliding over like the, in the middle of the ocean, and uh-huh. they went right down in the ocean, middle of the ocean. But luckily the paramotoring mo- motor has a built-in um, where it, it inflates. So like there's inflatables in it, so then you so float. So if you're over sit. water, you're gonna uh-huh. not crash. Yeah, and but there's go down but it's like ocean. basically nine thousand or twenty-two thousand in the water. It's like it's done. Wow, and it sucks, but yeah, it's but it's it's very um, cool. But here's a little paragraph of it. So, paramotor is a generic name for the harness and pro- propulsive propulsive portion of a powered paraglider. Well, that's that, a lot of P's. You drop yeah. like four P's on huh, there. Yeah, there are two basic types of paramotors: foot launch and wheel launch. Or you know, taking off. Mm-hmm. Foot launch models consist of harness attached to a frame. The frame is used to combine the harness engine and propeller. And so then you just launch off with the foot launch. And so it's like, it's basically like if you would have, it's like jumping out of an airplane with that, but except for you can go back up with that. You can go yeah, higher. Because you're not going to be going down the entire time. You no. have the opportunity to go back up. Yeah, and but I would never do that. It's because... It would be so scary. I mean, and I read. A oh, thing. never say never, son. Uh-huh. You're gonna be a teenager I, tomorrow, so you, maybe you would do it. Yeah, I read a thing where it's safer. It's not safer than driving, but it's safer than riding a motorcycle. Or um, well, you don't have any other cars in the air flying around to hit you, right? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, you you can do it with your friends and stuff, but it's just like well, and so, you and you and your and buddy has got an extra hundred grand grand oh, sitting around to buy uh-huh. these things. But it's like it's a it's 
You can, um... You gotta uh, stop the slurping. I'm not kidding. And so, uh, you can... But you, what you can do is... Oh, I watched this one video where this guy, his, um... His paramotor actually broke. But luckily, you have an actual glider. And an actual thing. So you can just glide right back down even if the back thing breaks. Okay. And you know, even if there's a fuel leak. The only thing is that if your parachute breaks or something like that breaks, then you're kind of... Yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, unless you sit on the fan and do, like, some like, Matrix stuff where you, like, turn on the fan, you're riding it, like, down, like, a surfboard or something. I don't know if you can do that. But yeah, yeah, I don't know about that. But, yeah, okay. it's crazy. Well, I've got one last question here before we wrap up the show that I wanted to, as, as you are on the eve of your 13th birthday and you're a seventh grader at Jim Tegard Middle School, I yeah. wanted to ask you, and I'm going to ask you this Oh, as we move forward in our podcasting career and you're in school and whatnot, what do you think, and I completely am springing this on you to everyone out there listening and watching, I mean, we have not talked about this. What is one of or the biggest challenge of a seventh grader going to Jim to Guard Middle School right now? Going to that exact school or going to any school? Yeah, oh, let's go any school. What is the biggest challenge that you see right now for any seventh grader? Um, the biggest or challenge... Or one of. It doesn't have to be the biggest because everyone's going to have a different idea of that. What do you think one of the biggest challenges is, though? Um, the biggest challenge is, in my opinion, doing tests and studying and just getting... I mean, it's going to be... It's going to get harder once you go into high school and stuff, but it's just being a seventh grader most most of the time it's being yourself not being being courageous and not being someone who you're not is a lot is a big part of it in my opinion and i mean tests and well you just covered like study. three things here. you yeah, said no, tests you test talked about studying. being courageous and you talked about being yourself so yeah being yourself, out of those three things because those are three very separate things i mean one of them has to do with scholastics which is school one of them has to do with you as a person and you know so out of the three what do you th i mean let's pick just one of them being yourself a okay. lot of, a lot of a lot of it is people thinking being insecure Insecure. Oh, they are insecure. Some, and they, yeah. they probably don't understand that yet, but they. And there's a lot of when when you're going through that, like we've talked about, there's a lot of, you know, like crazy things happening to your body mm -hmm. at that age because you're or like uh, I've had you know breakdowns because you know I've just lost Lots myself. Lots of stuff going and going just, on in your brain. Yeah, a lot you're of, just having hormones and you're getting just going through that well things that you've thing. never dealt with before yeah. you've never felt before and all that exactly. and so just going through school and dealing with that at the same time just being yourself is the most important and not just not acting like someone you're not because if you're being yourself someone should like you who for who you are and not for someone that you're not because if someone likes you for who for who you are for who you're not and they don't like you for who you are, then that's not a real, you know, friend. Yeah, exactly. Or a real friend. You should have someone who's who likes you, for, or, you know, just is friends with you because, you know, you're a good person, you're nice, and you're just being yourself. And it's like, I don't know, it's like, it's being yourself to some degree is what I, what I say about it. Because if you, you want to be yourself, like, it's hard because, like, if you're being yourself too much it kind of gives because sometimes you have bad things you know that happen to yourself well, yeah. being yourself so if you be yourself be yourself most of the time yeah. or all the time well, you want to be yourself all the time but you, yeah you just want to be aware of your your surroundings and things like that but i think it is important also what you were saying that you have a lot of different things going on and remember that there are Every other kid that you're going to school with is going through an odd time in their life as well. And you always, if there's somebody that you need to talk to about anything, you know, reach out to whether it's a principal, a teacher, a pastor, mm -hmm. a coach. There's always somebody out there that is willing to, to talk with you, discuss things. And if you need to open up, and this is a time in life when sometimes you need to do that. Yeah. Remember, you know, and it may not be a friend so much because it might be something embarrassing, but remember to reach out to, whether it's an adult or another kid, but somebody yeah. that if you want to talk to them, how important that is to communicate, right? Yeah, but it's like, and I understand for some kids, it's hard to go talk to an adult about something that might be very... Um, 
Embarrassing. Very scary for your life for being, you know, very just very something that's very personal. Yep. It's, it, 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 I mean, in my opinion, it is very scary to, like, go talk to an adult who's, you know, older and, you know, I know they would understand, but, like, it's just hard to go talk to someone. It's, like, I don't know, it's just hard to be brave enough to do it, but you should be brave enough to do it. Cause, well, you, you know, can be. I mean, it's not yes, you can always should be, brave be but enough, you, yeah. you can always be brave enough. So yes. just remember that, that everyone is going through that kind of stuff. Everyone's going through, you know, they have ups and downs, good days, bad days, and everything is is going to work out in the end and because what goes up must come or what goes down must come up and just remember that so if you ever have any questions yep. anything like that enough with the noises son you're killing me smalls <laughs> but anyway uh you yeah, know if you ever have any questions anything like that you can always reach out to us we can put you in touch with resources things like that at your school uh, again, you can send us an email, will at kineticchaos.com or Derek at kineticchaos.com. So, you got anything else for us tonight? Uh, nothing. You can go follow me, yep, twitch.com backslash kcb underscore diesel if you made it that long. Good job. And uh, Where can we we'll find you on the gram? On the gram? Uh, well, if you want to follow my personal one, or um, it's Slater underscore Derek7, but kcp stream team yep. is the um so if you want to join or if you just want to talk about you know whatever if ever and if you want to talk anything about a podcast that you didn't understand or you want me to go more detail about you can just text me on that or yeah, you can email on, me because on twitch as well Derek can jump on twitch live as well on the twitch stream and he can talk yeah. to you because he's been streaming a lot on there so we really encourage you to jump on there check out his streams he's got a bunch of stuff going on there and uh, beginning this weekend, um, he's going to actually record his stream so we can post it to our YouTube I've channel as well. I've already been recording. Well. You have been. Okay, good. So, anyway, well, we want to thank everyone for listening, for watching. Um, as a dad with my son sitting to my left, I can't say I'm any more prouder than I am of you, son. Happy early birthday. It's going to be a really exciting time for you and for the rest of your life, okay? Uh-huh. And enjoy it. That's the biggest thing. Enjoy it. Yep. Don't take it too seriously. Uh-huh. I love you very much. Uh-huh. Okay, love this has been KCP Epi- Kids Episode 9. Yeah. Thank I'm you guys that. for listening and watching, reaching out to us everywhere. We'll see you later. Have a wonderful day and evening. Goodbye. Bye. Peace. Okay, Woo. Facebook. Thank you for watching. Clippy.